Hello and welcome into the SoRare Andrews podcast brought to you by SoRare Data. I am Andrew Laird. You can find me as Lairdino on SoRare. Joined on this momentous day <laughs> in SoRare history by Andy Black, Black on SoRare. Andy, we had the big ETH threshold update. What do we think about it? I mean, we got our party hats on. Let's the go. The only thing that we're missing is our birthday suits. <laughs> Waist down, maybe. Yeah. We'll let people just imagine. Everyone seems really excited. And it's kind of fun that everyone is excited. I think before we do anything, we should thank Rares Are We, So so (laughs) Rares fans, fans are whatever his name was. Fans, Rares, uh, I don't know. Yep, whatever it was. Apologies, because I don't remember it was. But the the idea of limited threshold, because clearly nobody had ever thought of it, until they started <laughs> talking about it on Twitter. And props to Sora for acting so quickly to get it going. Andy, free money for everyone. Can there be a better day in Sora history? Yeah, I mean, it's going to just be be raining thresholds, raining thresholds for all of us. So I, I for one, am stoked. From what I gathered from, the, from read, quickly reading the announcement, I think we all get $5 every week for every card we own. Is that, uh... was that the announcement? That sounds like a dividend, I think. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's a bad word for some people who may be joining us. Thank you very much for everyone who has come to celebrate with us. Um, if you guys could please hit the like button, at least for the effort of what we went through to decorate ourselves today. As some I of told, us. <laughs> some of us. As I told Andy, this is the most prep I've ever done for a show. So... Hopefully the $6 I spent on all of these celebrations will be easily paid off with, I guess, one in a 1.2 threshold, limited thresholds in the future. I was, I was hoping that there'd be like some confetti or like some of the poppers or streamers so or something. I, I, I was looking for those poppers and just, I couldn't find them, but I was thinking about it, but it's also like not to give away too much of this <laughs> recording studio that I have at home. But it's a re- fairly small room, and I feel like if I had like let anything go, I probably would have like put a hole in something. So I didn't. <laughs> but I'll be honest; I also bought this thing for anybody who's watching, and I was. Does but it I float? don't have anywhere to hang Does it. it flo- oh, you got to hang it. You got to hang it, and it lights up, but it has like all these emoji faces on it. And I initially had just put it on my glasses, and uh, but I can't really hear anything because it keeps ruffling. Yeah. So this is but- not just what I bought for celebrations. There was more. I just couldn't fit it into this nice window. In reality, well, not in reality, because we, we, well, in reality, we were happy with this. It seems like a lot of people think this is a really positive update. We've got threshold. We'll go through the, the announcement, I guess, because even though everyone who is at least joining us in chat and probably watching this later or listening to us, if you're listening to us, man, did you pick the wrong week just to listen. If you're on Spotify, just take up the video, start again. Um, I hope that's, um, I hope it'll be worth it. So basically the, the shortcut to everything is that like, we now have thresholds in every division. And so people who play super rare now get them, people who play limiteds now get them. The gameplay is very different than what we are used to, at least for those who just focus on football. And so I think as we talk through it, people may realize it's not quite as easy as we think it is, but this is like a gigantic change. Like not even just the opportunities to get all of these thresholds at different levels, but like the gameplay is actually a lot different and it's kind of mimicking what we've seen with NBA, which you and I have been playing, but like a lot, there are plenty of people who play football who don't play NBA. And so this cap system is going to be new to them. And based on what you've experienced from the NBA game, do you like this cap system? Yeah, I think the the NBA game, the NBA game is really, really fun. And uh, it's like, I would just describe it as dynamic. It's different every week. Like you can't just play the same guys every week. Yeah. Um, And yeah, it's going to end up a lot like specialist in a way, because you're going to be looking for those like low cap hit guys that that are going to outperform but um 
you know, realistically, I, I, I don't know 100% what to expect as far as like how easy it's going to be to hit because 250 seems easy. But then when you take away captains and bonuses, yeah, it doesn't seem so easy. It's 50, average of 50 across five guys, and that's assuming you're going to get a goalkeeper that gets you 50, which I know a lot of people are thinking about going at this with no goalkeeper, which I, I would question if you have good enough players to hit the threshold without a goalkeeper, then those players might make more sense in other divisions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think... But I, I mean, we yeah. there... There are plenty of people who have been trying to play all-star rare and reach 250 threshold with four outfield players. And usually it's the goalie they skip because they're the most expensive. And theoretically, you can still do that as long as you, you know, you people have just used kind of the non-playing goalkeeper. The issue is this loss of XP and captain, which I don't know if people have really grasped how much, how different that is. I mean, generally you're looking at, you know, new cards are a minimum of 5% on each card plus the captain. I mean, it's a lot. And so I, I wonder how easy it will be to reach 250 with four players. I say that as somebody who bought a DMP super rare goalie an hour ago or so, because I'm like, yeah, I'll try it. Yeah, but we also not? have to remember, like, you can't necessarily play, like, four of the best cards um, to stay under the cap. I guess with a DNP goalie who has an L15 of zero, then that how, helps. How big of a DNP is your goalie? Like, is he dead? Mean? Like, is he no, dead? No, no, no. He is... Or there's, like, maybe some upside in holding the card? Um, I would say he's closer to dead, but, <laughs> <laughs> but he's not dead. And yeah. that's why... I, that's why I did it. In fact, I think he has a start in his last 15. So like I was willing to do that. It was a fluke, um, but he's there. Yeah, who but did frankly, you buy? I, who was it? Uh, Teton, XMLS Ooh, star. Yeah. D- he's now the backup for Lars Unerstall. Yeah, okay. That's and wild. so it's, I mean... So the way I justified it, which is the way I think a lot of people are going to justify things, is I spent... $70 on the card. Oh, Tector's telling me is 100% dead. All right. So I spent 70 bucks <laughs> on the card. One threshold gets me 100 bucks. And so that's it. Yeah. That's the that's as far as my thinking went. And Can't argue with that logic. Yeah, no. I <laughs> I think it it allows me to enter. I'll put it that way. And there you so go. The I, I think the other thing that people are struggling with, because we don't really have all the details yet, uh, in that we know that there are card re- there will be card rewards in these capped threshold competitions. Oh, Tecker's now saying he's only kidding. See, I just hope Unerstall gets benched now. But I say that, and so many of my friends have this card, have an, uh, Lars Unerstall. Um, but what am I going to do? So it's anyway... Jerome. Yeah. <laughs> They're not paying a threshold, are they? No. That's right. So, so we have this capped system and every week it's going to be like, am I going to take my best cards and try to get the threshold and cards or do I just enter it in the regular competitions that I have been doing? And and this is applicable in, in every uh, every scarcity. Like I'm not picking out super rare. Like I barely compete in super rare anyway. But the one question which, uh, and apologies if somebody has gone through this because I haven't seen the answer yet. And I, it's tough to like keep up with all of the, uh, the Discord messages and, and Twitter. But do we know if the capped competitions will offer prizes of the scarcity above what the competition is? Because that's what specialists used to do. And so... Wait, re- repeat that again? So like limited specialist limited used to reward rares and specialist rare used to reward super rares. So like, are we going to be able to play these threshold competitions and use rares to win super rares? Or is the possibility of winning a scarcity above where you entered gone? 
I'm, I'm yeah, kind of I think, different. I think it's I think it's interesting. I don't know that it it matters uh, that much. I think what I was most curious about was uh, uh, can you stack? Like, can you mm-hmm. play more than two players from the same team now? Because you couldn't in specialist, right? And now we have like. They sort of explained the new division, but they did that thing where they didn't explain it all the way. And now there's qu- questions because, like, I've got a couple spots where, like, I could buy one more card and and complete something and go for go for like a a, a threshold team somewhere. Yeah. And uh, but it would be like buying another player from the same team, or 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 that would be that could be part of the plan, or it could not be part of the plan. But I don't, you know, like, it would be nice to have some guidance there. Well, in, in that's a classic so rare situation where we're like, here, they're like, here are a bunch of details. And we're like, hey, what about this other one? Yeah. I think uh, the one that was fun was that they didn't, maybe they did actually say in the announcement that there were going to be cards in the, in the threshold competitions. But like, I saw it and I know a lot of other people saw it as it was Nepenthes who like asked if it was going to, if there would be cards and Zora on Twitter was like, yes. And it's like, that's not quite the official channel I was looking for, but I'll take right. it. Right. And I'm good with that. So yeah, the, the progression thing is, is important for me just in the way that I'll, I'll probably view these competitions. And so I don't know, like, we just don't know, like, we don't, we know that the thresholds are going to be there. We don't know if, the rewards are going to be really good. We don't know if they'll be better than the than All Star U twenty three in the regionals because they want people playing those. Like, what do you think the chances are that these capped modes are like the priority competitions in six months? I don't know. I I think that I think that they they're gonna want them to be um, because they have six months. They have you know they said that they 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 could redesign it in July or whatever. So this is now's the time to like go for it and see if like get as many people playing these as they can and really use it as like a testing ground almost to see um, like it, is it sustainable? Um, is it is it fun? Is it uh, is it avail like is it a, an available option for for like smaller galleries, uh, uh, like lower end players, because we know how specialist is. You have players falling in and out of those L15 gaps pretty regularly. Like, like this is, this announcement is so good for big galleries. It's so good for big galleries because you can just take a player out and plug a new one in. And, and uh, I mean, like someone like me is just like, like loving it. Yeah. I, I think it's just a, also a plus for people who like to move in and out of cards. Like there are people who just generally, genuinely, excuse me, enjoy the trading aspect of, of so sure. rare. What is kind of interesting that somebody had mentioned uh, in a discord I was in, and then I said it in another discord and totally took credit for it is that we, because there are no uh, XP bonuses on cards in the capped competitions that it's, like loaning cards specifically for those is a huge benefit because you don't lose. I mean, like you lose the XP, but the XP doesn't matter. Theoretically, if you ever want to use those cards in other competitions, then you don't want to lose the XP. But I do wonder if we'll see more loaning going on specifically because A, we have to move in and out of cards more and B, the, the XP doesn't really matter. Yeah, you had mentioned that earlier today in in, in a chat, and like it kind of blew my mind right away when you said that because I was like, oh yeah, you're gonna see a lot of that. Where uh, and and I wonder if if so rare will will care about that at all, or if they'll they'll like um, like be upset about that or whatever because like going in and out of cards or just like hey, I've got a I've got a a, a 34 guy. Do you have a 36 guy or something like that? Where people are just like trying to you know, wiggle it in there perfectly to, to, and, and honestly, like, I don't think that that's going to matter that much. I think what matters is that you have five guys or four, four or five guys that have good matchups that are, you know, at home playing against weak teams. Like that's, that's how you're going to like, like hit that threshold every week. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it kind of reminds me, and this was before I joined so rare, but 
hearing stories from like you and Quinny where people would try to trade for lower XP cards because they had to get the X or whatever the it was power. Was. Yeah. Just power, right. Trying to get Multipliers. different powered cards to fit in that system. To be honest, that sounded miserable to me. But but and I don't know how much we'll really see it now. It does also, and a few people have mentioned this in chat, like it does set up so rare taking one to five percent of each transaction <laughs> pretty nicely if they I mean, I think we all expect it to happen at some point. It is kind of funny to me because everyone I bring it up with who doesn't play NBA is like, yeah, one to two percent is fine. And it's like, well, the the precedent here is five. So I'm not sure yeah. like why they would just yeah. be like, you know what, we'll take much less for foot or for our most popular game. Don't Have you that. seen more just card for card trades on the baseball basketball side because of the fees? I don't know. Like I don't yeah. I haven't I would, been I would imagine, to, right? I don't think it's any more than than we would see anywhere else. Hmm. Because like inevitably the when you want a card, you're not paying the fee. Like the seller is. So if you make like a proposal for a card, the counter offer has to be like for other cards. And like that never happens. Where somebody's like, I'd like to give you ETH. And you're like, no, no, let me get three other cards so I can, yeah. and I'll have to, like, at some point you have to sell them. And so, like, you're going to pay the fee at some point. So, no, I, I, I'll be honest, I haven't looked to see if there are more. The only card trades I do are with Pavel. So, like, I don't know. And frankly, I think this new counter offer situation has made Pavel significantly more liquid because every offer is now countered with I'll take all of those cards and some ETH. And very rarely are you like, okay, I'll give you a card worth that or worth 120% of that. And then he accepts like, it's like, you need to have a little bit of ETH. So I assume he's getting ETH literally on every transaction. Hmm. I don't know. Daniel Cooper brings up a point that I've seen a few others make. And he said, I feel like these thresholds will be much harder to achieve than people are initially thinking. I agree. Do you agree? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean, you you need player, you need five players that are going to outperform their L fifteen. Yeah, yeah. So, I think, I think a lot of people are like really focusing on the fact that there's a limited threshold, and ignoring that a lot of people who would be norm like norm the, a lot of people who have even if it's just one limited lineup and there are plenty of people who just submit one limited lineup each week, they may not be able to submit that one lineup in this capped competition. And so now, now they're buying cards. It's not as much like just set it and forget it. And it does require more work. And as a few people brought up, including Maxime here, you need people scoring decisives. Like it's it's really not going to be as easy as people think, but it is nice that like they they delivered it perfectly. They were like, "We're threshold is staying. In fact, we're going to expand it. More people can have it. We Still got our party hats two, on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Still have to get two fifty. Don't worry, we're not going to three hundred. But also, there's no captain or XP, so don't worry about that. And so, and there's no lower threshold either. There is no lower threshold, which makes the title of this podcast incredibly stupid now. But yeah, I think... <laughs> Good point. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> I think we were looking at it as the lower threshold, meaning limited threshold. But again, like I, it's going to be really interesting to see how many people chase threshold and go out of their... I mean, for a lot of people, they're that... Like they're going out of their... Not out of their way but they are choosing to chase this threshold and give up their regular all-star or wherever they, wherever they generally enter. And I wonder if by like the end of February, people are like, this is actually a lot harder and this isn't that fun. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. Uh, I don't know if people will, will, will say it's not fun because they can't achieve it. If they can't achieve it, I, um, I think that that's kind of on them. <laughs> on, uh, on, on, on the, the, the user, like trying to, trying to the, like the manager trying to get to 250, like it's not that crazy of a number, like, yeah. like work harder. Um, but what, what you certainly can't do anymore is buy five guys, never, never look at the platform again and just submit a lineup and YOLO. Yeah. I got my five guys. I'm going to get my 0.02 and 0.0 whatever every week. And, um, and I'll talk to you later. Like th that's not happening. Like you're going to have to get in and out of cards or expand your gallery. Um, it's going to be work. And, and it's work that doesn't guarantee that you reach the threshold. And not that like sure. there was ever a situation where it was guaranteed. I, but. I think that there's, I think that there's a good chance that if you're willing to do the work, you're going to be able to get it on a semi-regular basis, whatever the hell that means. I, I agree. I think this is a huge win for people who are willing to do the work. And yeah. I think that's a, that's a, the way that a game should be. Like it should not be easy to win. Reward your engaged users. Don't yes. reward your users that just came in once, bought five guys, and are doing the bare minimum. Yes. Yeah. yeah absolutely. And and it's it's hard. It's harder, but it's not impossible. Like I think they know. I mean, we know how many people reach threshold by scoring. You know, two hundred and eighty points every week. Like there are, because I think it's generally like a twenty point difference without the XP. Somebody said that in chat, so I'll just happily take credit. Um, <laughs> I should probably tell, say who it is, although it's so far back now. Um, but, <clears throat> oh, here it is. Don Renz. You're looking at a 22-point reduction without uh, XP and the captain. So, I mean, that's kind of some sort of average there, but that's fine. But, yeah, so I think it, yeah, it rewards people who are willing to do that work. And it still lets those who would rather just pay for whatever meaning like, let me just buy five cards and I'll get the threshold. Like if you just buy the five that happen, the five most expensive that fit under the cap, like you can do that too. Like is that, nobody's stopping you from doing that as well. Do you think that rewards will be easier to win in the non-capped competitions now? Or do you think they reduce the rewards in order to pay for the new ones? Yeah. I think the expectation is that they the rewards from specialist and underdog are going to these uncapped ones and not necessarily pulling from all-star and U23. I think that that's probably a good, like a fair assumption. Um, I think that there'll, there'll be other little pieces to it too, where you see rid, like s smaller numbers of entries and like the super rare divisions, for instance, mm -hmm. because of the removal of the rare. And um, I think, like in a few spots, like I, I think there's too many moving parts. I think there's too many moving parts to that question to be able to like realistically, like even guess at an answer. Yeah. But I would, I would guess rewards are going to be close, close to the same. Yeah. I think that's fair. Uh, one, one part of this that we haven't touched on yet, which is less about threshold is this, removal of rare eligibility in the super rare division. Yeah. And we had like one of the things that we always talked about in terms of like card utility is like just the reason why super rares aren't necessarily just 10 times more expensive than rares is because uh, rares have much more utility and s the removal of rares from super rare make it a lot harder for people mostly because of the goalkeeper which is basically the same place we've been in any anything like the goalie's always the issue and i do wonder if we'll see fewer like do you think we'll see more people trying to get super rare goalkeepers or they actually give up on the super rare division i mean i don't know if what we'll see more of but both of those things are definitely going to happen right um I mean the the path of least resistance there obviously is to to not get buy, out yeah yeah not buy a super rare goalkeeper so 
Um, you probably see more of that. I would, I would guess, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, if you already have four good super rares and you're one super rare goalkeeper away, you probably have the funds to, to go out and do that. I mean, if you have four good super rares that you feel like you can compete with, but yeah. Uh, you know, the other, the other th funny thing too, I wonder if they'll remove the unique from that division as well. Since you're, if you're getting rid of the rare, maybe you get rid of the unique too at some point. I, I thought about that as well. My only like they haven't. Yeah, they didn't yeah. say it. They didn't say that. And I feel like the the utility of uniques is so low at this point yeah. that it make like it would be a bummer for people who have one unique or two if they were like, yeah, you can't play that in super anymore because they're so far away from competing in the unique division. Yeah. Like having to buy like three more uniques. And there was a there was some talk. I saw people talking about if they got rid of rare pro cause like rare pro is not mentioned anywhere here. And I don't think they're getting rid of it. There's been nothing to say they're getting rid of it. But the reason why I was saying that is that it's such a huge jump. If you were like, yeah, we want people to progress from rare to super rare and without rare pro, like you're waiting for people. And now the fact that you can't use a rare and super rare division, like you're basically telling people they have to wait until they get five super rares, which is like a huge jump from rare that I just don't think it's happening. Um, so Daniel said, I think they did say super rares, only super rares. It's just the removal of rares. Not, although, so we say this and you can use, you can still use a super rare in the unique division. Yeah. And you can use a super rare in the unique Threshold. You can, use, you can use two unique or use super two super rares. Two super rares, right? Yeah. Right. Yes. And then and you can use one super rare in the unique threshold. Right. There we go. Because that all makes sense. How crushed are you that they got rid of the global unique competition? <laughs> yeah, I think that one's that one's been that's like a long time coming. Like they've been probably needing to, I don't know. I shouldn't say that they've been needing to get rid of that one. Um, but th I'm sure they've been looking to get, looking at a way to get rid of that without um, pitchforks coming out. But um, yeah, I'm not, obviously I'm not playing that. So I'm not, not upset about that. So we still see some comments here in the chat about the super rare division, the super rare capped threshold tournament requires five super rares. Yeah. I believe just regular like all-star super rare theoretically requires five, but you can play four and a unique. Yeah. Un unless there's something not in the, uh, not in this communication. Right. Maybe I should look up Zora's Twitter and see if he's. <laughs> Did he tweet answered. something? Did he have like a, a special tweet out there that we didn't read? <clears throat> right. It's possible that it's there. So, so yeah. So the, it, that's confusing though. That like the rules for the super rare uncapped or super rare capped and regular super rare competitions are different, but oh well. Classic so rare right there. <sighs> Man, we'll get there one day. We'll get there. <laughs> the what was the other thing? So obviously the uncapped, excuse me, the, the capped, I don't know why I keep saying uncapped. The cap threshold competitions are supposed to be this like combination of specialist and underdog. I feel like there were a lot of suggestions previously that they should have moved away from like a per card limit, meaning like in specialists, you needed an L15 of like one player had to be 40 and below only one over 60 and more people wanted just like, give me a cap and let me fit under there. Do you think that's the right move? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing more infuriating than having a player that's like 40, like a goalkeeper that's 41. 41. I have so many. Every one of my goalies is 41. Oh my like. God. <laughs> and not only that, but like, like also like if I felt like if you had like two players that were like 41, they were not good enough to be your, your 40 through 60 guy. Totally. You'd never play them. But I would because I didn't have anyone else. Hmm. So you'd end up with those and then you'd end up with just a team that felt subpar because you could only put one good player into the lineup that's over hmm. 60. And then it's like, now I'm wasting that 60 yes. plus guy. I got to take him out. And then you just like, the, you end up scrapping the lineup and not, not doing it. 
But at least with this, it, if you do put in two of the 41s, you can make up that difference elsewhere. You can make up that difference with two high 50s guys or low 60s guys or whatever, and then maybe like one really high end player. Like, um, and 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 sometimes it does make sense to play those like 41s because it could be a goalkeeper that's at home against the worst team in the league. Like yeah. that happens. And, and I, I've had that before where it's like, I have the softest matchup for my goalkeeper. He's on 41, but I don't feel like I should, I should, you know, waste him there. Yeah. 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 yeah that makes total sense. I think, well, <laughs> I was going to say you always had underdog 45. Yeah. But we don't have that anymore. So, but we might have, we might end up getting like a capped 180 or something. Like they could do that where it's like another, even lower, the lower threshold. There we go. Let's there it go. Is. Let's there it go. Is. So, yeah, they were very clear that, let's see, the 240 points cap for capped mode 240, capped mode 240. What a name could slightly increase or decrease based on our initial data review following successive game weeks with a new model, which I believe our good friend Trip and B translated as, if we're giving away too much money, <laughs> we're going to have to raise the, or lower the cap. A hundred percent. Which is fair. I get it. Like the, yeah. So we <clears throat> have been part of many conversations of people who are like, they should just reward ETH to everybody. Like just move to ETH rewards or just significantly increase them. And this move feels like it's closer to that. But the big difference is from what we gather from kind of the, the announcement and the expectations is that, that the amount of ETH being paid out really isn't any different. I think somebody said like it might be a little more to begin with. And if it is more than cap mode, 225 might be coming sooner, faster, but it's really just distributing it out to more people, which I think is really all people wanted anyway. Like getting rid of the unique division and like saying, yeah, everybody in limited can have this now. Like I get it. I think it's great. It keeps people more engaged. And yeah, so I, I think... Before everyone's like, see, ETH for everybody. It's like, well, it's the same ETH. It's just now it's for more people. I am going to switch gears slightly here because I was talking with someone uh, earlier today who was like, I've convinced a lot of my friends to come in over the last few months and like play All-Star Rare for the ETH threshold. And now it gets a little more complicated because it requires a little more work. And I'm wondering how many people who have been playing all-star rare for the threshold with players they probably have never heard of and didn't, don't really want to own NFTs of random guys from all of these leagues, sell those rares and just move to the limited thresh capped threshold, whatever we're calling it, cap mode 240 limited so that you can start buying cards of players you've actually heard of. You think we there's a possibility we see that kind of movement? I think it more is reliant on this right here. If if you have the money to keep playing rare, um, like like if you if you came in to play like grind thresholds and you still only have like five to eight rares or something, you probably don't keep playing that cap mode. You probably need more rares to do it. Uh, like I'm just thinking about NBA and playing contender. And trying to play that with uh, five to eight cards of a scarcity. And that's not even taking into account position. Like, yeah. Imagine if you had to take into account position. Then it gets really dirty. But um, yeah, I think I think you need, you realistically probably need like 15 cards to 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 play this mode. Or the, the ability or willingness to go in and out of cards via trades on a game week basis, not even weekly basis, like game week basis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if like, if you can't, if you, you can't ac accomplish like that right there, then you probably need to go down to limited. Hmm. That's reasonable. 
I, I do wonder if we'll start seeing people, and it requires you to move in and out of a lot of cards, but like if you, if you figure out like a five man team that you want to play for rare and you're just like, I'm going to buy these five guys in limited and just go for it. Yeah. It seems like something I would do once and be like, oh, this is a terrible decision. What I was thinking about more is people that like are playing all-star pro right now. Cause I kind of have, I've got a bunch of buddies that are kind of like in that area where they're, they're playing rare pro and they're maybe kind of on the verge of playing the super rare division floating in and out of that. Yeah. I, I don't think, I don't think it's reasonable to think, Oh, if I just get a super rare goalie or if I just get one more card, I can step up and, and grind the, the super rare threshold. Mm -hmm. Like I think, I think you, you need a lot of cards to do that, or you need to have the, the money to go in and out um, of cards like very frequently. Yeah. I... <clears throat> or you're just not going to be optimized. You're going to be so far under the cap that. I, I do think that there are going to be a lot of people and like, this is a big DFS thing too, that make suboptimal decisions because of the cap that they yeah. start getting players who actually are not as good this game week, but it's like, oh, I don't want to leave all this cap space. So let me go get this other guy. And then I've done it in NBA. I do it in NBA all yeah. the time. I'm like, I have got a budget up to 11. This guy is one of the best projected players of the week, but, but he's only a seven against my cap hit. And then I'm like on the fence. I should not be on the fence. Like I should no. go with the projection, go with the experts. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, I think there are going to be a lot of people who make that, I mean, it, I guess I'll call it a mistake. Um, Percho said, Dan said on Discord, another great place for announcements, uh, that they would introduce more competitions and that the cat mode is just the start. God knows what they'll come up with. That's what the party hats are for right there. there. Yeah, Stuff like, like, like information like that. I, I will say that, and I... I say this coming from the NBA where they've recently like added competitions and then taken them away that I actually hate that like special weeklies or it's like, Hey, we're introducing this competition for three weeks. And it's like, I don't know if I want to buy cards for three weeks and I do it anyway, but like <laughs> I end up, I mean, I think when you start making competitions that rec that, incentivize buying a lot of cards it's good to follow that up with more competitions where i can play these cards because like there's nothing worse than there's nothing worse than training lineups <laughs> than like looking at cards you were like man i bought this card recently because of this competition and now i can't play it and now i just have it in in a training lineup so more competitions always best Mike Baston brought up, yes, exactly. When is the over 32 special weekly? I actually do not want this. I want this over 32 to be a regular competition. I'll even take capped over 32. Whatever you guys need to do, please bring the over 32. I think 32 is too young. Too young? Yeah. I think it's just that it's like we just flip the numbers of 23. Ah, okay. Yeah, that you should, don't, be, don't easy to change. To, that should be easy to program, right? You yeah. just flip two numbers. <laughs> You just take it off the, the movie theater board and you just move it over. Yeah, of, yeah. Yeah. I love it. And then you do the same with rewards and you're done. Exactly, exactly. One of my favorite parts of this announcement, we have received overwhelmingly positive feedback surrounding so rare football specialist and underdog competitions that we got rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> that we made them better. We made right. them better. That's what right. we did. So, did you, Mike Bassin, did you see what they said about legends? There's no way they said anything about legends. I think I'm being. Yeah, he's got to be messing with us at this Please, point. Please, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they count in the over 32. That's what I'll take. I'll happily mm -hmm. take that. Yeah. Um, let's see. You know, I, there was a lot of stuff that came out today, yesterday. I mean, how, how have we not talked about uh, King Nicholas? sitting in a chair next to the president of France. No, no, no. I think that's when they made Nicholas president of France. I think he's president now. 
Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. That was that. That was the official like passing of the torch. I saw some funny things about like uh, what they were discussing. Um, do you, Do you have any ideas what they were were discussing? Just Web three. Did they ever really discuss anything in those meetings? I don't know. They look like they're <laughs> friends, so that's nice. Yeah, talking about Pal Trader. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do like, or yeah, I was much. I thought you were going to bring up the uh, the black the black turtleneck. Like, that was much more. <laughs> Yeah, I'm much more interested in Nicholas's media appearance wearing the Steve Jobs black well, turtle next up. Yeah, and I think he just got that, and he's ready for the next uh, community event. So we'll have the glowing light, and we'll have like the new SoRare smartphone that he's going to come out with, and yeah, it'll be great. SoRare phone? <laughs> Can you get that? Yeah, you don't have to two factor into your account every single time. You have to buy. <laughs> you have to buy that special phone to do it. That's just it. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> um, Techers is saying uh, capped legends where your legend actually takes the worst score of the team. I do you think Shayler's is coming? Oh, I mean it. It it definitely needs to. Oh, I mean if they're taking suggestions for game modes, that is the best one I've ever played. Yeah, for sure. Just for those who are unfamiliar, it's in regular SO5 lineup. Lowest score, lowest combined score wins. DNPs are a hundred points. Yeah, go play. You, you could even put a threshold in there if you wanted to. <laughs> Why not? So like, un, like under a hundred, you win. Yeah, you score months. under a hundred points, you get a threshold payment. I love it. But but if you score over like four hundred, you got to pay. So you owe them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the prize pool comes from. Yeah, it's not gambling. I think that's actually yeah. the definition yeah. of it. But I think so. As somebody who has been on the platform for a while, how does it feel to have threshold payments explained purely in dollars? It's fun. It's I mean, it's weird because you're like, how point oh, how many? Yeah, how much is that? But whatever. Like I honestly, like I, I think each one's just doubling the threshold. Mostly, right? Besides super rare to unique. It's going five, five, oh, well, five to 50, I guess, isn't quite doubling, but Not quite. $5 is quite low for the limited, but I guess it has to be. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that. I actually thought five was reasonable. 50 seems high when you look at the five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I guess I it was like, already there. They, they weren't going to like peel that back early. That's, a, that's fair. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you could. I, don't, I I doubt it made financial sense to go any higher than five dollars for limited. Yeah. So there's that. There's gonna be just a billion people taking shots at that every week. I mean, I don't at know the what the threshold. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the the entries are for like All Star Limited, but those all are just gonna, I would imagine, mostly get moved over to you know, the, the threshold one, right? Well, I mean, it depends how good your limited all-star lineup is. Like it could be too good for the capped. Like, you still have yeah, but if them. it's that good, then you'll probably, well, I was going to say you'll probably add cards. Like, if you already have cards that are that good, you're probably adding cards so that you can get sure. that threshold every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Uh, Alan had a good question. As NBA and MLB players, meaning so rare players, are you worried about money leaving there to chase the money in football? Personally, already thinking of selling some to strengthen football. So it's act- I love this question because I had a conversation literally yesterday and about my own gallery. And I thought to myself, it's weird how football, I mean, it's not weird because I obviously have been playing football for a while, but I keep talking about like potentially buying certain NBA cards. And I'm like, I don't know, don't want to put that much ETH in there, but like my gallery is so heavily football. Mm -hmm. And, but there's also so many more competitions. there. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, so my thinking was like, maybe I'm actually entering too many. So I should sell a bunch of football cards so that I can enter like all the NBA ones. Huh? And then this announcement comes out and I'm like, maybe I should just sell all my NBA cards (laughs) to get more football cards to play cap two fifty or whatever we're calling it. So yeah, no, I don't know. I I, I do my, think that there's going to be. I 
I actually think that money is going to leave NBA and go to football less because of this announcement and more just because the World Cup is, I mean, we still have a month, but like I was expecting money to leave to go back to football when football returned anyway. So yeah. it doesn't really change my opinion on it. My opinion is we're I'm already I'm exposed to all three products um, mm. and I'm thinking like longer term than like the next six months on all of it. So uh, I I just want I want long term exposure to all of them. So I'm not yeah. moving money out or worried about people, other people, what they're doing. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, I like the I like the long term exposure to all three of those platforms. Even even baseball, which we know that baseball is like the uh, I shouldn't say that it, like baseball is like the redheaded stepchild, but I will. But it is even though it's like off season and like we all expected it to be kind of like the thrown on the back burner, but um, which it was. Yeah, baseball. Yeah. I just I feel like basketball is so good for like this fantasy game and like the cool factor and the demographics of it. And I think soccer is too. Baseball's kind of like, you know, boomer sport, old man's game, which pers- personally I en- I enjoy the baseball product, but I can see why others might not. I still want exposure to it. I still want to collect my guys. And I think it's a, I, I do think it's fun. Yeah. I mean, you like baseball. Like, I think if you like baseball, it's a fun uh, game to play. I, yeah. <laughs> I used to really love baseball. Well, sure. Um, um, uh, did I tell you the story about <laughs> taking my family to the ball game? No, we made it through three innings. Oof. This is like, this is like six months ago. The family went to the game we made it through the third inning and my kids were just like, Hey dad, can we get, can we, can we get out of here? Can we get out? <laughs> I was like, sure. It is kind of a boring game. I mean, didn't you like fill them with snacks and all the good stuff that you do at a baseball game? Yeah. Yeah. Just didn't work, huh? No. I, so I took my son to a Yankee game and it was like the judge, like we went with so rare and it was the judge could have hit, could he hit 61 that night? Well, or 62. I keep forgetting his hat is like hitting my decorations behind me. Yeah, but the um, ball was juiced, right? The ball was juiced. <clears throat> what? No, it's a small sample size. It's not, there's no proof of that. Looks pretty juicy though. Um, anyway, we're not here to talk about baseball. Hmm. We just let everybody left because they didn't talk yeah. about that. So do you think, for, so you have a lot of cards. Oh yeah. So <laughs> how do you feel about setting uh, it's probably three more lineups per week, right? Like uh it's no, I guess less, not because you less were lineups. At, three were less lineups. Specialist and underdog for yeah. all of those. So it's yeah. actually fewer lineups. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like that's moving in the wrong direction. Mm, yeah. I I think the the nice thing there though is uh specialist and rare lineups were never like really prioritized for me for yeah. a couple of different reasons. Like the rare specialist, the rewards always kind of sucked. They did. Um, so <clears throat> that was usually like one of the last ones that I did. And then the underdog rare was one that I did go after, but it, that one was hard because you, you really had to kind of do what Gator guy does and find the guys of the week. Um, it was work. Yeah, it was. It was. It was more work, and uh, so I only went hard there. Like if I already had maybe like two of the pieces that I needed. Yeah. yeah. So in short, in short, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be less work, and um, I don't know. Like I, I, th- I still think it's good, and there's the there's the fallback of like I didn't win, but I still hit the threshold, like that gap there where. 250 probably wasn't good enough to win before in either of those competitions. Now you can at mm. least get a threshold out of it. I'm, I might even be wrong there. I haven't like looked two, recently. 250 <clears throat> so and, and specialist. Yeah. Especially like specialist underdog or specialist. Yeah, well, super rare. specialist is probably the closer one because there was no XP in that one. You had a captain in underdog, although you only had four players in underdog also. Right. 
but that captain that captain was such a big like part of that score for sure because was, like, wasn't that yeah, the 50 yeah. percent one yeah it was big i suppose the thing we're ignoring is that underdog was the cheapest path to play so rare like you needed players that weren't that great didn't need a goalkeeper and now you need a goalkeeper for uncapped yeah do you think that point. pushes that makes it harder to start like you're kind of still buying the four crummy players, but now you're also buying a goalie. I wonder if people just buy one goalie and they're like, this is my guy every week and I'll just make the others fit. That's probably yeah. what they'll do. That's, that's probably it. Uh, but imagine your goalkeepers at home at, or not at home away to PSG. It's right. like, eh, got to buy another goalie this week. Yeah. I bet people still don't. <laughs> for 12 saves, maybe a pen save. Yeah. And don't give up six. <laughs> yeah, do, I don't know. Do you do you realis- realistically like think that though? Like when you're making your lineups, do you ever play a goalie against like a tough, tough opponent? Uh that that's such a bad question. Of course you do, because I do, like everybody does. But do you put them in priority lineups? Yeah. Where it's... No. Um, I I really try not to. I, I I'm fortunate enough where I have enough goalies where like, even if they're usually I have one that's okay, that's like good for that week. And so I'll put I I don't have that many priority lineups. <laughs> I have like one or two that are good, and everyone else is just kind of just throwing in. And so. I, yeah, I generally try to stay away from like the really bad matchups, but ultimately they're in lineups. Like it, I'll never have like a starting goalie. Like I'm never going to put a, a line. If I can make a lineup, I'm submitting it. I'm not putting into training. Yeah. My win percentage is probably like 7% because like I just throw them in. And, yeah. and I do that because the whole like, well, you never know. But like I've literally never gotten a card or any kind of reward with a lineup that I know is dead going into the game week, but I just do it anyway. And so I'll do it. Yeah. I didn't realize how cheap MLS goalkeepers were. Tyler Miller, uh, Laird's best buddy, uh, $35 for a limited. It's not bad. Is that low for a goalie? I don't know. That seems like a good price, especially when you're not thinking in, in fiat all the time. Like me, I'm like, Oh, 35 bucks. That sounds great. Um, yeah, that does seem decent. Hmm. Maybe I'll just buy 10 of them. <laughs> Bill 15 of 33. Hmm. How does he have... Did he have one start? He had one start. Ah. Uh, so how, so how, will that, how will that work? His next game, his L15 will be the average of that 33 and whatever the next game is? Uh... Well, like you'll play him. It's like it'll be actually like, let's call it game week one because it won't be one. But game week one, his L15 will be 33. Game week two, it'll be 33. And in game week three, it'll be the average of the two. Okay. Mike Basson saying you can have his Tyler Miller for 34.50. Seems like a deal. It seems like you're selling too early, Mike. What is the floor here? The floor, oh, it's an uh, the auction is at thirty four seventy five. Oh, they're flying now. Got to watch out. Um, do you think? Do you think that the <laughs> the announcement was? Um, do Do you think people are are thinking about it in like rational a rational way? Like, do you think that it's actually good for everyone? better for everyone as a whole is so rare giving away more money. (laughs) So I think it's good for more people. Like I think so rare probably wins because you generally don't make business decisions that hurt your business, but more people are benefiting from this new structure. That doesn't make sense. Well, I'm just saying like, if 
let's say you had a thousand ETH to give away every week, right? And and you give it away to 500 people previously. And yeah, now but you're, you're giving, giving you're giving me four shots at that ETH now. Just you though. I mean, there's lots of whales on this platform. Yeah, yeah, but it's but I think it's actually not as concentrated. Like you now have four chances to like you can go after that super rare threshold. But guys, apologies for like calling guys out. But like now, whoever competes in like the unique division or the whatever that global unique like that's like ten. What isn't that like five ETH that they gave away every week? It was a lot. Now that yeah. now that's going to other people. Yeah. Mike said it right. More people can benefit. We just don't know if they will. I think my hot take is the right people are going to get benefited now. Yeah, I love that. And I don't mean I don't mean me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I yeah. mean people that mean are me? willing to. Yeah, <laughs> I mean people that are willing to to work, uh, uh, construct lineups that make sense, pick out the guys that are in good spots. Like those are the right people to benefit. Those are the people that um, you really want on your platform, growing on your platform and getting the benefits of like, um, engagement. I think that you nailed it right there. Yeah. You want people who play the game the best to win. They should be the ones to win. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just really wonder if we're going to get to a point where these capped games are the, are the game. And everyone kind of looks at the regular, uncapped ones as extras like that's where they throw their extras yeah and, and i think the, i think the initial reaction would be well i i have all these players and i was playing in these divisions and um but i i think the nice thing really is is everyone can just adapt because there'll be people that need to add really strong players to their teams there'll be people that need to dump strong players from mm -hmm. their teams and I think that like the where the market's at now, it would work itself out pretty quickly. Yeah. If you want it out of a card or into a card. I mean, there's enough people on the platform to where um, you know, you might take a little hit, but sure. Yeah, no, I think that's right. I I do like this question. What are your thoughts on XP becoming useless on low to mid tier cards? It does feel like it, they're pretty useless now. Meaning like yeah. the XP on those. So you're saying the XP on a Michael Bradley... Uh, no, 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 no. Useless cards. What's what's an example then? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just wasn't here for the Michael Bradley slander. Which is funny that I'm the one sticking up for him. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Since I'm on the Minnesota United... Like your boy, Michael Boxall. Mm -hmm. Does his XP matter now? Because like, you're probably not playing him in All-Star or America. <laughs> and now you're playing him in Uncapped. So does it matter? Yeah, I just don't, I don't, I don't know that it's any different than, than the way that it was when he, you were probably only using him in Underdog or Specialist. So I think it's kind of the, the same situation yeah i don't think i don't think the xp mattered anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think That's you're awesome. probably right yeah so a few people brought up the possibility of this going to to nba from what i gather i wouldn't hold my breath on eth rewards in nba or mlb but I agree that it would make those games explode. Do you think that that's all just like contractual? Yes. Yep. Legality or whatever. But I do think it would be. Do you think that it's the NBA and MLB that don't want cash rewards in, yes. in their game? Yes. God, I mean, I don't, I don't think SoRare wants it either. Like if you're like, hey, can we, what if we just had rewards of, jpegs and we just like kept making more jpegs i could just like you know command c command v change the number and they're like these are the reward the cash and they're like yeah no, i don't think we should give away the cash we, we yeah but 
what if what if that cash is like you know realistically they know that it's kind of pouring gasoline on the fire a little bit um they know they know what it does to the to the market who's they so rare well sure they know yeah but like i don't think the league just doesn't want to be associated with it i guess right right the the leagues that have official gambling sponsors and yeah but i think the fact that I think Sober put themselves in a gray area by like not being gambling, but also like, we're I think free, if they were, we're a free to play game, man. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It does. A few people brought up like, yeah, they offered like NBA gift cards. Yeah. But it's going to take a lot of gift cards. Um, I don't know <laughs> to make up for the, those thresholds. Well, somebody, Yeah. Gregovich said, I wonder if the contract prohibits cash equivalent rewards like NBA store gift cards, but they've given those out. Like those yeah, have been um, rewarded. Uh, Peachy won one. Yeah. I think, he, I think he showed me, he bought, um, I think it's Steph Curry uh, jersey. Love it. With it. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I, I think, I think that part is great, a great idea that they do that. It feels impossible to win those things. Cause they're like, Hey, 8,000 people will play this competition. We have three gift cards to give yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, okay. So I'm not going to win that. But It's anyway. like the Global Cup prizes where it's <laughs> yeah. like, ah, oh, the Zidane experience. Yeah. Well, yeah. Fly to I'm Marseille. 30,000th place. Yeah. Beat 500,000 people and get flown to Marseille. Oh, that's it? Okay. I mean, it's better than the lottery. Look at that. He got two jerseys, he said. Two. Two. It's quite a gift card. Yeah. Or quite a sale. But yeah, I'd like to see more of it, but in those games, but I don't know. Nothing we can do about it. It's out of our hands. Uh how how long how long does the party continue um into uh January before people uh trade in their their party hats for pitchforks for pitchforks well it yeah. doesn't start until january 30th so at least until oh, really we haven't yeah january 30th is when it starts i guess when, for some reason i thought it was like the beginning of january which seems like it would have made sense but is is this where we complain that they told us too far ahead of time don't give us yeah. all of this lead time yeah for sure for sure um i'm i'm also typically okay with like them making announcements and then just like going for it. Uh, YOLO, right? But yeah, it, it is pretty funny because it like, um, everybody wants, I'm sure everybody wants this now to just find yeah. out like, hey, am I going to be able to be competitive or not? I want to find out. And uh, I guess, I guess concepts is a good way to, to do that on uh, server data, right? It is. Yeah. So if, 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 People have, a, I guess, a, a, well, small gallery, big gallery, whatever, and you just want to see what ty types of teams you can put together. Uh, concepts on server data will show you without bonuses, yes. without captains, how many yep. points that you'll score. Yep. 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 So you can see how often you'll be able to hit 250 with uh, cap teams. Yep. I mean, you can do it in the lineup builder now if you want to look at your own cards. Just put it in like all-star, whatever, and it'll show you how many points they've scored previously. Okay. You can see that. <clears throat> oh, I was going to say something else, and now I've forgotten what it was. Mike does bring up the good point, though. They're just waiting for the other leagues to come back. Oh, yeah. that's what I was going to say. How did you feel the fact that there was an announcement of an announcement to tell us to be available at 10 o'clock Eastern to read a blog post? <laughs> I'm fine with that. Um, <laughs> I'm also fine I'm also proud that we they got it out on time. They dropped it at exactly the time that they said that they were going to drop it at, which um, I've seen I've seen other uh, NFT projects where uh, <laughs> they'll make the the pre announcement that it's coming out, and then you get the announcement that hey, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer. We're uh, still fine tuning the uh, announcement for for y'all, and uh, we'll get it out uh, as soon as possible. And then you don't, you, yeah, you, it's like two a.m. and then it comes out. Hmm. so yeah that, I did was, see, that was nice yeah i did see mark joked around that they were going to move the announcement to 5 p.m on friday but they didn't they delivered today everyone's happy we got to party for now for now yeah 
Thank you to everybody who joined us live to uh, experience this party. If you guys, <laughs> you guys could please hit the like button on the video. That's always really helpful. If you could please subscribe to the channel. If for some reason you are watching this video and haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. If you're listening to the audio version, you missed quite a show of the video. Just go back, check it out on YouTube. You don't have to watch the whole thing. You can just see how ridiculous we look and then hit the like button then. Um, and yeah, so... Thank you, everyone. We'll be back next week, probably without the props, unless Sora gives us a reason to, to bring them back out. Huh? Maybe they will. You never know. Never know, Andy. So yeah, thank you to everyone, and uh, good luck with all your Global Cup teams.